Have you ever wanted to create an approval workflow after you receive some information? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be covering in this video. I'm going to be showing you how to create an approval, uh, an entire process, all based on the receipt of information that was submitted via a form. The best part is this is all going to be inclusive inside of one software. So if learning about this is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's our mission to help you unlock the full potential of your no-code tool suite. And in this video, we're gonna be using Fillout, our absolute favorite form software. If you've never used Fillout before, it is going to revolutionize the way that you do business, the way you do your operations. It allows you to seamlessly connect with all the other no-code tools out there and receive information through form submissions, but it has so many more robust capabilities as we're gonna see here in our workflows video. Now, before we get started, I first wanna invite you to join me for some automation training. If you're kinda of new to no code, if you haven't really stepped fully into automation, this training will give you the fundamental building blocks of automation building in no code. It doesn't matter what tool you use, the automation principles are the same and I'm gonna outline them for you in the training. Go ahead and sign up at gapconsulting.io slash webinar dash registration. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen. And what I'm looking at here is Fillout's workflows. This is their page that kind of outlines what these things are. We've got a bunch of different types of workflows. We've got notifications, approvals, scheduling, AI and conversion kit. In our particular workflow, we're gonna walk through approvals, of course, but you could add different workflow types here. And it kind of just walks through what a workflow is, how to set it up, all of that. The documentation that Fillout's put together is really quite good here, but we wanna build something on our own. Now in our example, we're gonna do an approval workflow for a job application form. So let's go ahead and pop on into Fillout. This is the sign-in screen. If you are not already a Fillout user, please consider using our affiliate link. It's a great way for you to show some love back to the channel. If you are already a Fillout user, of course, we welcome you to follow along here, but go ahead and log in. And once you're in your account, you can start with creating a form. It's called making a fill out and we can use either a template or build it from scratch. On the left hand side, you have your workspaces. I will choose an example workspace here. This is one that I use often for recording and I'll make a new fill out. It's gonna ask me if I wanna go from scratch, if I wanna connect it to anything else, any other third party apps, or if we wanna start with a template which we do in this case. So I'm gonna go here and search for job application. Let's look for application. I'm seeing that pop up right here on the upper left corner, job application form template. And it gives us a bit of an outline kind of going through what this is. And we can go ahead and use this template. We're just copying this template right into our forms and we'll be able to work on it from here. So once I continue here, that was simply the name of the form. I would encourage you to rename yours. And here are the different components. So we've got the applicant information, this is static data here. And then each one of these elements is its own field or question in the form. Note that these are drag and drop. So all we have to do is highlight them and we can move them around the form quite simply. And we can also click in for more advanced settings and make things required. For example, maybe we absolutely need an email address. We can click here and inside of this field on our right hand panel, we have the required element here. When we make something required, we're gonna see that asterisk and this means that the form cannot be submitted without that information provided. Now there are some other features on the right hand side. Sometimes they're very dependent on the field type that we're using. So it might be like in the case of an address, we're gonna have different options here. We have the logic to show it conditionally under specific uh, conditions when things are met. We have more advanced field options like showing a second address line. This is one of those different features that's only available to this particular field type. So based on the fields that you're using, the fields of course are selected on the left hand side, then the options, especially the more advanced options will vary based on that field type. So here we are, we're inside of our form. Once we're happy with it, we can choose to publish it from here. And that is now a live form that were we to share this form link right here, or we could embed it on a website or in some sort of 
automated workflow process that we already have. Now, when people visit that link, submit the form, we're going to receive that data on the back end. Now, in our example, we want to set up an approval workflow, meaning that when we receive a new application in our job form, we as management want to make a decision. Is this an application that we're going to accept? Are we going to move them forward? Or are we just rejecting this application outright? So in order to implement this approval, we're going to go back to our form here and we will click on integrate. This is the second tab. This is second after we've built the form itself. Now here on the integrate uh, section, you see that we have workflows right here. So integrations, this first panel is all the different uh, integrations that we can set up with our form, sending the data to various databases, uh, different software, etc. But in our case, we want to get into that workflow. And there is an approve or reject workflow template already set up for us. So we can make this selection. And you'll note before we do that, it says that it's going to send an automated email based upon a manual approval step. So let's click this. This is what the workflow looks like. So high level, this is kind of a flow chart, right? When the form is submitted, then there will be this middle step here, the approval process. If it is approved, then we will send an email that says one thing. And if it is rejected, then we will send email that says another thing. Let's go ahead and set up this workflow. And it's just that simple. We've copied that workflow template into our new form. And of course, when we're ready, we can publish it from here. Now, before we publish this workflow, let's go into the emails and we can actually edit what we're saying in these emails. So here you see that we can simply send a very simple email that says, thank you, uh, or hey there, your submission has been approved, thank you. We can choose a different theme if we'd like. And we can also switch over. This is the formatted style here. We can also switch over to basic and keep things pretty simple. We also get to choose who the recipients are. And you'll note that the information here, the send to email address is coming from the information that they filled out on the form. It's being sent from my actual Gmail account. So you can also set up your own Gmail account simply by coming into the send email section. And you can also send the emails directly from Fillout. So from you at Fillout. Of course, I prefer for them to come directly from my Gmail. It's a bit more personal and uh, just a cleaner look for most use cases. Also, you can edit the subject line here. And if you ever want to bring in information from the form itself, that is the dynamic data, you can actually access the different pieces of information from the form submission. So this is all customizable here. I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, my particular email. We have some advanced uses as well. We can CC, BCC, change the reply to email, add attachments, etc. Uh, but one more thing I want to do here is just, you know, come in here and add some more stuff. Thanks for applying. So this is fully customizable. And similarly here, we can add information from the form. So if like in this case, we got their name in the form, we don't have to say, hey, there, we can come in and add a dynamic variable and bring in their name. So whatever they answered as their name, in this case, their full name, hi, in, in my example, it would be hi, Gareth Pronovost, your submission has been approved. Thanks for applying the end. So again, this is going to happen when approved. This email is going to be sent out when rejected. We can edit this email separately. When we're done, let's go ahead and publish this. And now it's time to take this workflow out for a test. So in order to test this, we can actually submit the form itself, or we can just set up the test button here. And it's saying, uh, do you want to first create a submission to test with? So yes, I do. So here is the sample information. So what is your full name? What is your email address? This data has just been sample provided, of course, just some fake information for our submission here. So now we're going to imagine that we just received this data in a form submission and run the workflow. So the form is submitted. What happens next? If approved, it's going to send out the approval email. If denied, of course, or rejected, it will send out a separate set. So here we see that the form was submitted and then we are stuck or we're hung up on that approval process. It's waiting for the output, right? It's waiting for us to say, yes, I've approved this. No, I have not approved this. And once a decision is made, then it will branch out and go the different paths to send an email. So let's go ahead and stop that test right now. But this is where you come once everything is fully set up. Click on test and it will run through whatever workflows you've established for your forms. 
Now, we never configured our actual approval process. So this is why, of course, it was kind of getting hung up in there. It was saying like, hey, I'm waiting for a response. I don't know how to proceed. So in order to set up our approval, we can click in here. And of course, we have our two options that can either approve or reject. But notice that we have options for how we are asking for this approval. This is really, really cool, especially if your team does a lot of work inside of Slack. We have the opportunity to do a Slack DM. We can connect to Slack, direct message somebody so that when a new application is received, they get pinged directly in Slack and they can choose in Slack whether to approve or reject. Similarly, we can post to a Slack channel. So maybe you've got a few managers who oversee some applications. You wanna send the approval process and the first to respond, either approve or reject in that channel is gonna take the next action. Now, what we were doing, of course, by default is the email option. So if we go back to say done here and we publish this again and we run another test and run the workflow, you're gonna notice that it's gonna be sent to my email for the approval. So once it goes back to that second step, the approval step, I'll have to flip now into my email and here I've opened up the email. It says, please review this submission and here's the data that we got in the form. So if I click on approve or reject, that is going to move it on to the next step. You'll see here that uh, it's actually approved that step. And if I go back now to my workflow, it will receive that approval and then send out the next components, which is the email component uh, denoting approval of that application. One additional thing to note is, of course, if we are sending an email, we can edit or add new approvers to the process. In order to do that, we're gonna click on that approval process step and go to edit here. These are your approvers right here. So in this case, it's everybody who's a part of our fill out account, anyone who has access, we have as an option that we can add here to our approvers. Now, of course, if you are using the Slack DM option, you connect to Slack and connect right there and same with Slack channel. But if you're using email, you can customize who is on that approval team. You can also come in and update the options. So maybe you have something like strong fit and just, you know, highlight that, change the verbiage. You can add additional options as well. Maybe you want to say potential fit and we can change the color of these two. And that allows us then to further customize what our process looks like. Now, of course, depending on how the uh, submissions are received, you know, what happens here is going to dictate what goes down what path. So here you can see that we have the strong fit now mapping this direction, reject is mapped this way. And if we need to add a new step to the workflow for a potential fit, we can quite easily add another step to the workflow slash automation right here. One final thought here is that we can actually manage all of our approvals or rejections in one nice panel. We don't have to go back to our email every time to overview that. So in order to access all of that, simply open up, fill out, go to the form. So in this case, we're on our job application form still, and we're gonna click on the results tab up here at the top. Here is our uh, first example submission that we received. And if we click here on the approval needed, where we can see that it's already complete, but here again, it's gonna open up that right-hand panel and show us what's going on here. And of course, we can look at the edit history, we can look at the comments. We have, in essence, a place where we can collaborate with our team on this process and review all those applications. And the best part is, we didn't even have to integrate this with any third-party software, all of this data stayed right inside of fill out. The entire approval process, either approved or rejected, it all stayed right here. Now, I know we went pretty quickly in this video. I'm sure you've got some extra questions. So if you do, feel free to drop them below or visit our website and get some extra help. If you got some value from this, do consider giving us a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, but most importantly, keep on building.